My daughter, my daughter, when she's home alone, she has a gun with her in whatever room she's in. West Texas ranchers are sharing their stories about how illegal immigration has impacted their livelihoods, family, and peace of mind. CBS 7's Gianni Wendall brings us more in Border Patrol Behind the Badge. Tucked away in the mountains in the outskirts of Fort Davis and the wild expanse of Valentine sit several ranches. Several ranch owners tell me their property has been used by undocumented people, but they still provide them with food and water because they say it's the Christian thing to do. The Means Cattle Ranch in Valentine, Texas looks like a movie. Cows and horses roam and the way of life for West Texas cowboys and cowgirls remains almost unchanged. But this land has become a busy roadway for undocumented people. And we stopped him, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for 505, Well, 505 is eight miles that way. And he, he was, what he was doing was picking somebody up. Across the large cattle ranch are items that have been left behind. Backpacks of drugs and clothes and trash and shoes and water bottles. They say tracking devices have also been found in some of the drug bundles. And on another part of the ranch, this guest house was used by migrants. They went in to shower and they didn't know how to get the water turned off. I mean, it ran for a long time because we don't go up there all the time unless we have guests. Around $20,000 worth of damage. Shelly says the vehicle has been stolen, fences pulled apart, fire started, and their livelihood, Angus cattle, have been left thirsty after water tanks were drained by migrants. The same impact is felt miles away in Fort Davis. At the ranch of their lifelong friend, Roxa Robinson, whose family has worked this land since 1905. Here, water tanks have been drained several times recently. It was in a pasture where we had the cattle, so we had to uh, hurry and get the water back to them. It takes days to get the water systems online on ranches, where it's hard to put a price tag on time. It's all time. It's not time that we schedule. It's, you know, time that you fit in. Every time you have a fire, I mean, that wipes out a whole day. And just about a football field away from Rox's house, a fire was started last winter. Where they started the fire was right up there where that red spot is, down in the canyon. It burned several acres of grass she uses to feed her cattle. Drugs have also been found. In that ditch down there. Roxa says the migrants she's encountered are different than the days of her childhood when many people took advantage of a guest worker program. They just want to charge that phone and where is Houston, where's Dallas? The brazenness of some migrants has Shelly concerned about the safety of her mother back in Valentine. This is her front door and um, <clears throat> this is where um, a group of them came in and they kicked her door in and then very, luckily, she wasn't at home. If y'all want to come in here, there's a step down here. Items were stolen, but it's an incident in February that left the family rattled. Around a dozen young men had been dropped off in the mountains. They ended up on Carmen's property and were given a meal before Border Patrol picked them up. They threw a phone, all kinds of information. They had a map of my property. It was pictures of her house, of her driveway, of her hiding, of a hiding spot. One Christmas morning, Carmen walked in the living room and found a man. He quickly said, uh, Tenny Cafe. And I said, I can't speak Spanish very good. And I said, oh, see, sí, see, sí. un momento, <laughs> un momento, or something like that. Carmen made coffee and breakfast for the man and his friends. The two later went peacefully with Border Patrol agents. Carmen says she was told days later agents picked up 40 kilos of cocaine under a tree on her property, as well as several other migrants. These West Texans know their way around a firearm, but they don't want to have to use them. Besides the effect it would have mentally, they say they're worried about retaliation from the cartels. It's not shoot and ask questions later because <laughs> we won't be around if we did that. So a group of ranchers call each other every day to check in. We're on high alert all the time. We're, 
Well, how you doing? You know, you call. What's going on at your house today? The ranchers say the U.S. Border Patrol and local law enforcement agencies have been a big help, but they feel ignored in Washington, which is why Shelly and Roxo started a website. So far, more than 1,000 people have signed a letter demanding change. We need Washington to, ta to take us seriously and not think that we just are, I don't know what they think. They don't pay attention. The local families and ranchers and farmers that live on the southern border, it is not up to us to um, manage. As the sun sets on this ranch and many more like it, the ranchers tell me they'll continue to be vigilant and call each other to check in. In far west Texas, Gianni Wendell, CBS 7 News. Gianni, thanks. Another interesting fact the ranchers tell us it's a big deal when fences get cut because if their cow gets out and someone hits it on the highway, they're liable for the damage and that could tank their livelihood. What's happening hours away at the edge of America reverberates across West Texas, Border, Pro Border Patrol leaders say. Over the past few days, we've taken an unfiltered look at the number of people and drugs crossing into West Texas and the toll it's taken on resources and people alike. This first alert report series, Border Patrol Behind the Badge, is on our website. You can see it all on CBS7.com.